Hello there, my name is Jude Pullen and I'm a creative technologist and engineer and I'm working with Design Spark to see what we can do about air quality and it started with this uh, article from The Guardian in 2018. And so what we're trying to look at here is essentially saying what, how, what is the quality of the reading that you can take with cheap sensors? That's the challenge. Uh, I genuinely have no idea how this is going to play out, but it's an interesting project. So what does a home blood pressure monitoring kit like this have in common with our air quality evaluation kit? Well, interestingly, I worked on redesigning one of these for the NHS as part of my uh, student project. And one of the things I learned from the clinicians that was really fascinating is that they're not actually interested in the accuracy of this. They will disregard the actual numbers, but what's interesting is they monitor the trend. So this is sufficiently precise. The point is it's triggering a reason to go seek better data, to go see your doctor. Um, I think that's what we're creating here. We are creating a air quality canary, should we say the canary in the coal mine, that is to alert you of when things are trending badly, but it is not saying this is a ISO standard laboratory test gear that's completely bona fide. I am currently sitting in the shed, but at the same time, <laughs> I have not opened the windows deliberately to see how much of my hot air, in other words, CO2, is uh, uh, building up in, in this like two meter by two meter shed. So I have definitely got a, a bit of a headache sitting in here deliberately. But either way, I thought it would be interesting to show that, uh, again, the sort of parity on this other sensor, it's about 200 parts per million uh, lower, which I think is completely reasonable in, in terms of an error factor. These are little bits, um, and basically how they work is they've got little magnetic connectors and they basically connect into one another. And the question is, can we turn this into a credible engineering reality? Prototyping in cardboard, blue tack, and uh, even little tiny pieces of Lego holding things together. I've got more boards and electronics than I've ever seen in my life in this room right now. This is the first uh, sort of spatial prototype of uh, what internally we are calling the Jam Sandwich prototype. So, here we have it. Here we go. Hey! <laughs> what this is, is the equivalent of this. So this is the really exciting part of the project, is how can this help you provoke beyond reasonable doubt that there is a problem that needs attention. I hope this is a useful analogy that in many ways, both of these are cheaper than the professional grade gear out there. But interestingly, when used in the right way and when you are analyzing overall trends rather than isolated data points, then you have a provocation to go get that professional data. So we designed this to be something that provokes further action and that is the activism in the engineering. So weirdly, we started off on this project talking about uh, you know, pollution and air quality, that this could be a really meaningful thing to put in restaurants, schools, or whatever, as essentially, a, you know, I'm kind of just calling it a sort of COVID canary, but, 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 but that's the thing, it's the canary in the coal mine. This is a prototype between the air quality kit and my canary which is hopefully going to do all sorts of automator and general sort of fun. We sort of give the data some form of life. Uh, let's say uh, a, low, a low CO2 level. Uh, if I turn this, this will basically move that such that it flaps. So it might be in that position with a little bit higher. Let's say 700 parts per million, 1000 parts per million. That would be like a sort of level one warning or whatever you want to call it. And then I realized that as I over-indexed it, don't know whether you can see this, it goes past the center point and then actually tips the bird forward. I need to somehow connect this to that and then we're done. All right, <laughs> easy. 
So the thing that I've, I've realised is that if I use a magnet and attract it to this piece of wire, I can actually make it flat, but then at some point disconnect it, allowing it to, to fall. <laughs> as macabre as it is, I'm really pleased with it, because it's taken me forever to figure out how to do it. So here we have it. This is the uh, protoboard and then all the electronics on the inside. Um, and basically, I'm, I'm really pleased that the CAD has moved on a long way. Now and transferred ta -da, into this box, which feels weighty and good quality. So I think this is this is a really exciting project of uh, seeing so many different people um, approach this sort of catch-all phrase of Internet of Things, but truly explore different ways, not just to, to live with it and engage with it, but also to actually make it talk. So uh, it's absolutely terrific. Um, I'm going to bed. Good night.